I thanks for joining. We're just on time. I suggest uh, we start with the uh, conversation directly. In parallel, I'm just trying to uh, to open the Facebook page and to copy paste the link again to make sure that people see it and are able to uh, join us. So, um, could you please uh, introduce yourself and um, uh, just uh, tell me and uh, to my audience uh, uh, who is Vincenzo Di Nicola and uh, what is uh, currently your role in um, the crypto industry, in the Bitcoin industry and that world in general? Okay, uh, can you hear me? Yep, perfectly. Yeah. Thank you, Valeria. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, my name is Vincenzo Nicola, uh, co-founder and co-CEO of Conio. What is Conio? Conio is an Italian-American startup uh, with the goal of making cryptocurrencies uh, such as Bitcoin easy for normal people to use, buy, sell, send, receive, and recover in case of emergency. So we want to be like uh, the answer to a normal person, like let's say my mom, my uncle, who want to enter this space, but they are still concerned about how to use it, how to buy Bitcoin, how to like uh, safeguard my money in case of uh, issue. And uh, we want to be the answer. We started in 2015 uh, with an investment from the Italian Postal Service, Post Italiane, which is, um, I mean, of course, they do postal service in Italy, but they are also the biggest, uh, let's say, bank, state-owned bank in Italy. And um, uh, we are two co-founders, me and Christian Micoli. Christian has been the founder of ING uh, Italy, uh, like the Italian subsidiary of the big uh, Dutch bank. Mm -hmm. And then he created the uh, Kebanka, which is like the second largest online bank in Italy. So we joined forces and we said, look, I mean, this is actually a wonderful time. I'm talking about five years ago mm -hmm. to like in this space and to try to make an impact in the world. And uh, over the years, uh, we, we, of course, we started a team, we grew, we raised uh, uh, round the invest investments from uh, different banks. Uh, we did important things uh, from a technological standpoint. Mm -hmm. We released uh, our products. And uh, now we're also, in addition to our software, our app that you can download on the Italian App Store uh, from iOS or Android, we have also been the very first company in the world to integrate with the bank. Which means is this, that uh, uh, if you're a customer of that bank, the name is Hype, it's an Italian bank, very famous, you will be able to buy, sell, recover Bitcoin directly from your bank app. So no need to install any additional apps. So our goal is actually to make things simpler, simpler for people. And uh, we discovered that integrating ourselves, integrating Konya technology with banks, it's probably the easiest way so that people can actually enjoy the benefits of cryptocurrencies. Which is uh, absolutely great and um, it's so wonderful that uh, this is uh, the way actually the banks are realizing uh, the benefits uh, from uh, Bitcoin and in general this technology and they're willing to uh, absorb and uh, to, to develop uh, on it in order uh, to attract uh, additionally uh, customers. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, one of the problems with the, the Bitcoin narration has been, uh, I mean, again, I'm not saying it's good or bad, but it's actually definitely bad for normal people because Bitcoin has been described in technical terms, which are which is great. I mean, the, the technology is fantastic. The thing is this, though, that uh, it scares people. It's almost like you would uh, describe emails from like the SMTP protocol point of view, which is great, but at the point, the normal person would say, look, I, no, I mean, I don't understand anything and uh, you will be scared and you wouldn't use email at all. The same with Bitcoin. If you start talking about uh, the blockchain protocol, like all the terminology behind the scenes, which is wonderful, uh, but it's extremely hard for a normal person to understand, uh, you scare them away. Instead, with Konyo, we had a different approach. We want to make things simpler, and to make you understand, look, I mean, there is nothing to be afraid of. You just use it uh, and uh, it's as easy as to send an email. That's it. Okay, so uh, you, you mean 
this is the way you, you made your platform, in other words, because I'm not capable right now uh, to have a look at it. I think it's uh, only for the Italian market, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, from that product that you're having? Uh, for compliance reasons. So, I mean, I can uh, give you, uh, let me see, I don't have it here. I want it, uh, well, I mean, uh, but if you, there are a number of videos online. Uh, I mean, okay. if you go to our uh, homepage, um, mm -hmm. uh, you see also the way that we represent Bitcoin. So something that people are worried about is actually, they talk about Bitcoin, they see it's a virtual currency. Okay, what is virtual? It seems like something that you don't understand. Our app instead, we, dis we decided to make Bitcoin tangible, physical. I mean, I know it sounds like weird to say to make something physical, something that's immaterial, but we decided to represent Bitcoin with money balls. So if you go to our website, you see like uh, the way that we represent the coin and people can move those money balls and they shake it. You can hear the sound of gold. Actually, it may, I know it's nothing to do with Bitcoin, but it's uh, the usability, like the way you present something that makes people easier for them to understand and easier for them to relate to. And at that point, they understand that it's actually money in your wallet here in your smartphone instead of something in the cyberspace. And I think it's such right. a... Yeah, I think more or less uh, people, yeah, maybe for the majority of people, it's really very scary, more specifically because f the first time when you hear about Bitcoin, and if you are not uh, literally a technical person who is capable to explain to him herself, respectively, you are really, uh, yeah, it, it's about money, and the, the first thing is you get really scared because you, you don't understand what is behind of it and uh, the way it's presented and it's introduced uh, to the majority of the people is from the technical perspective more. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe that's uh, one of the reasons people are having uh, difficulties. And uh, I think it's, it's great that there are more uh, platforms like that for sure. I, I see it, uh, it's in English, so, so I'm going to check these videos that you've mentioned about. Are they in Italian only, or are there are also materials in English? As well, I mean, right now, so the app is uh, available both in Italian and in English, though probably most material are in Italian for one reason, that we started in Italy. Uh, we wanted actually to like, get more feedback from the Italian market, but also because whenever, since we did with money, uh, money it's an interesting topic because it's not just technology unfortunately or fortunately depending on the point of view you're subject to regulations uh, to do business uh, when uh, it relates to some financial material and um, the law in Italy may be something and we uh, are fully compliant with the law in Italy but let's say if you go to France the law may be a little bit different uh, or in Spain or Germany, or if not UK, which is no longer now, I mean, it's not going to yeah. be in the European Union at all. So each country has some sort of different uh, variation to the law, and you need to like be compliant with each one of them. So uh, yeah. to, be, to be in Italy for now, and then once mm -hmm. we have to grow organically, we can move to other countries. Yeah, I see there are also other products who are, uh, let's say, they're making kind of European uh, uh, mass uh, adoption of their product and they have launched uh, all the European countries. But from other side, this is uh, a little risky. This is only my opinion, uh, just, uh, just because, uh, so the places where the markets are not uh, export enough well to do such posi positioning of a product, which from the other side, you have to make sure you are capable uh, to, to support the service in the respectively in the language. And as you say, all these regulations that uh, you are required to do in order to uh, launch your product out there. Yeah. So first you're exploring Italy and uh, which, which is um, a very good uh, uh, way to go forward. You, you're totally right, Valeria. I mean, also one is custom support. Let's say that yeah. you're from Germany. I mean, you want to have custom support in German, mm -hmm. but also I mean, also taxation, let's say, because something is actually, I know it's not pull or topic, but it's actually unfortunately important. People might ask, you, let's say you're in France, you say, oh, I'm buying Bitcoin and then I sell it for uh, a gain. Uh, what should I do with the tax authority? How should I report it? Mm. Well, these are important questions uh, that only if you have a presence in the country, you can answer. Uh, um, I know technically yeah. Bitcoin 
great that it's borderless, wonderful. And I really wish that more and more people would use Bitcoin as Bitcoin. But if you actually have, uh, if you have um, sort of like, um, mm -hmm. you talk between Bitcoin and fiat, whenever a fiat currency such as Euro is involved, then you enter into sort of like regulations that you need to comply with. And that's different right. from it. Right, in each and every country uh, for sure is completely different. However, as far as I know, it is uh, more or less at least uh, regulated. I mean, not regulated, but inserted, inserted in each and every uh, European uh, uh, member law. Uh, mm -hmm. The Bitcoin is mentioned and all these uh, associated uh, currencies, uh, mm -hmm. which are alike uh, Bitcoin and, uh, for example, in, in Bulgaria, you are uh, required, uh, uh, of course, uh, to, to declare uh, all your uh, Bitcoins, uh, respectively, if you are an individual uh, mm -hmm. by the end of the year, and you pay taxes uh, on it. So it's treated as a uh, non-liable thing, financial asset. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I mean, for, for Europe, I mean, Europe from the regulation standpoint for sure is not very well regulated because lots of details are missing, uh, which also gives from the other side uh, uh, a way to some scams to go forward, uh, which uh, is um, not uh, very good. I mean, also from your, see, I mean, yeah. things have been a little bit tough in the European Union because recently there has been this thing called the uh, the fifth directly, uh, the fifth anti-money laundering directive, uh, mm -hmm. which is, uh, in my opinion, not terrible. Uh, uh, I mean, like, uh, it basically forbids uh, uh, companies uh, from providing cryptocurrency services to people unless uh, the company asks for uh, documents, IDs, uh, from the get-go. And in my opinion, this is actually, I mean, uh, it's uh, not, first, it's not cool, and second, it's like uh, totally, I mean, I don't like it. So unfortunately, yeah. us as a company that operates in Italy, we need to comply and we need to ask, so it, even as soon as you open a wallet, we need to ask you for a document. And uh, right. it's very strict. Uh, I, mean, I know um, that, uh, see, there are pros and cons, but the thing is that... Um, so uh, there is kind of interruption. Sometimes a law can... So the connection. The, it's lagging the connection. On this front. I'm not sure whether the problem sure. is on my end. Can someone please? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Now I think, but it's lagging really. So I haven't um, heard. I would no, say sorry. last twenty to thirty seconds from the conversation. Ah, okay. I don't know where you. You lost me, but I'm saying that the European Union on the cryptocurrencies actually sometimes can hamper, they can like be detrimental. They can be? Sorry, it's really I think the Can kind of... you hear me? Yes, but uh, I literally, I'm capable to hear. Let me, let, me, let me try another network. Okay, please take your time. We will be here. Um, I would like, uh, meanwhile, I hope you guys uh, are capable This was Alexa. Hi, Alexa. Thank you. So, no, I, this is, I mean, Milan, the, like uh, here we still some, I mean, no longer under um, strict lockdown, but uh, connection may be a little bit uh, slow. Sometimes. Strict uh, lockdown connection. And this will be a very, very big problem. I no, mean, I, Vincenzo. If yeah, no. we have uh, uh, connectivity problems, I but mean, in general, during pandemia. <laughs> we can survive, but we can make it. <laughs> I'm sure, but it will be harder than what uh, we, we've experienced so far. So. Put it this way, under lockdown, we were able to integrate with a bank. So, I mean, we can do anything, anything at all. So there is nothing that's impossible. Right. As long as it's uh, legit and regulated, there is nothing there. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, and you have mentioned, I'm really curious um, um, to know more about the hype uh, that you've mm -hmm. mentioned about. And of course, uh, Conio, this is something in uh, uh, my to-do list uh, for sure. I'm going to download the 
apps respectively. I have to check whether I'm eligible to make an account in Hive. Mm. Uh, I have to check it. Uh, so, um, I, uh, that what I've seen in uh, your CV, in your LinkedIn profile is um, that uh, currently you have also another role. Uh, mm -hmm. You're acting as a um, blockchain strategy advisor for the Italian government in San Marino Republic. Yeah. Uh, could you please um, share with us, um, if possible, more uh, in that direction, what is your role there? Well, I mean, uh, so the these are two different roles because uh, okay. both uh, the uh, both the Italian government and uh, the San Marino government. San Marino is a small country within Italy, but independent. So they decided. I mean, they understood that blockchain technology is actually gonna be important. It's gonna have a meaningful impact to our life. But there are usually not that many people who can understand it. And uh, I mean, usually what happens is this, that whenever you know there is an innovation coming, usually it comes from the United States and usually it conquers the world. And uh, usually uh, Europe is always like uh, land of conquest. So again, I'm talking about like usually what happens. This time, at least the Italian government uh, or some, and San Marino thought, look, I mean, we know this is coming. So let's try to understand about this uh, subject. What is the blockchain? What does it do and uh, how can we um, make companies in our countries uh, grow and become stronger? Like uh, how can the Thailand system benefit from this innovation and how can we, can we benefit our citizens? So they um, created a, a committee uh, in Italy, 30 people in San Marino smaller uh, to see uh, what kind of usage can blockchain have in different areas, maybe financial applications or monetary applications, or even like uh, maybe something about like supply chain, which is, uh, I mean, number of companies are exploring uh, uh, the field. And uh, the committees uh, provided the, the guidance to the government and then uh, it's up to the government to decide what to do. So we provided uh, just like uh, feedback, uh, opinions of what the government should do. Uh, it's actually an advisory committee, then it's up to the politicians to decide uh, what to do. Right, so um, as far as I know, so there is a, a program Horizon 2020 and it's mm -hmm. for the whole European Union and lots of um, uh, companies, also small startups are applying. I think there are several directions. Uh, I'm not really aware, but I know that the whole European Union is actually working on the blockchain technology and mm -hmm. uh, they're exploring it further. For the fact whether Europe is always the last one, I'm uh, with history, I'm not very good. Uh, but definitely if there's a tendency, so I know there is always a repetition of uh, the past. Yeah. Um, but um, that uh, um, what it's going on in the feeling uh, specifically, I don't know, uh, after this halving of the Bitcoin, this biggest event, that for me it was uh, my first halving, it was the third halving for uh, Bitcoin, but it was my first uh, uh, conscious halving for Bitcoin, yeah. to understand what is it, but uh, honestly, I don't see any any differences. I think it's stable. It's a little bit higher from price um, perspective, uh, but uh, I don't know. You see it in the transaction I mean, there, there have been uh, for after the having there have been a little bit uh, more transactions. Uh, there have been like uh, additional costs, fees. Uh, things are gonna. I mean, nothing like super uh, special compared to the history of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it went very smoothly. I mean, like uh, in the next few days, you're not going to see really any real difference. Uh, but so I want to say something like uh, yes, you mentioned just a little bit before Horizon 2020, which is a program by the European Union. And you know, like the uh, European Union does many things, uh, maybe like uh, with goodwill, but the implementation actually sucks. Like uh, Horizon 2020 is one of those programs because, yeah, ideally, you want to help startups. But the application to Horizon 2020, it's so convoluted, so difficult, so impossible. Mm -hmm. and why then, why then you don't want to share? Hmm? What are the reasons for... Ah, well, I mean, it's very complex I mean, to apply. And uh, yes, you can do it by yourself. But usually now, almost every, any single, uh, every single uh, uh, startup applies to like uh, intermediaries, 
that apply for, uh, for Horizon 2020. So it developed a market of intermediaries mm -hmm. need to pay to ah, Okay, okay, okay. A third party score interim in the middle and yes. they are responsible for the process to submit uh, the document. And uh, it really okay. is, uh, there, is, there is such a market. I mean, uh, not, I mean, again, nothing illegal. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you provide the guidance, legal guidance. No, no, I get it. But man, I mean, like European yeah. Union, that at the end, uh, created a market of third parties that just for the application of Horizon 2020 to profit from startups, which are not like the most uh, like uh, money, like um, they don't really thrive too much. I mean, they are really money conscious, but instead they need to pay this third party agency to apply. So, I mean, like, like most things in the European Union, they start with maybe goodwill, but then they become a nightmare. So, I mean, again, I'm a little, little bit angry with Horizon 2020. So since you mentioned it, I just wanted to say it. But in terms of, instead, going back to Bitcoin, yes, it's been the third album. Uh, I've been into Bitcoin. I mean, the first time I heard about Bitcoin was 2012, to be honest. I was in, uh, I lived in um, uh, Silicon Valley in, uh, in California back then. And then uh, I've been like in the Bitcoin space for, uh, for a number of years. And so till now, like uh, it's been eight years. Um, the reason why I learned about Bitcoin was, I mean, I don't know if uh, like, uh, it's a little bit weird, but there was a friend of mine in Singapore who uh, was a, my classmate from many years ago, from many years before from San Diego, who wanted uh, to get some olive oil. So I'm Italian, also my grandfather bought some, some land and we do a little bit of olive oil, wonderful Italian olive oil, best in the world. Like we do it um, on our own, not in industrial measures. We produce it and then we drink it, we consume it uh, in the family. But it's good. And my friend wanted to get some olive oil. And my friend uh, lived in Singapore. And, and then he asked me, OK, can you ship me some olive oil? And I said, yeah, I did it. And I sent him, I sent him some olive oil. He was very happy. And he told me, I want to pay you. I said, look, I mean, uh, don't, I mean don't worry. I mean, it's not a problem. Forget it. No, no, I want to pay you. I want to pay you. And it was really adamant. He really wanted to pay me. And you know what? I mean, I said, I told him, look, I mean, what, do you have Bitcoin? And he said, yes. And he sent me Bitcoin. Like the, for me, that was like, uh, I, I told him like almost like as a joke, but actually he had, actually had Bitcoin and he sent me Bitcoin. Don't joke with Bitcoin. Never joke with Bitcoin. Right, no, <laughs> and then it was, it was uh, uh, almost 2013 and uh, you know, it was almost a joke, but it actually was not a joke at all. I mean, and that's how I got interested because Think about this, whenever you receive a payment from Singapore, I mean, from the other side of the world, immediately said, wow, I mean, actually, there's actually quite value here. I mean, I've been into the, more into the payment space for many years now, and the payments, uh, I mean, when you talk about, when you think about credit cards, uh, Visa, MasterCard, uh, at the end of the day, they are the same as in the 60s, like um, the, the pipeline, the pipes, like um, the rails uh, under the hood, I mean, whatever happens behind the scenes is exactly the same. I mean, nothing really has changed over uh, decades. While Bitcoin actually totally changes, it's actually disruptive in the sense that totally uh, reshapes uh, the payment system from the, from the ground up and, from, and uh, allows very easily from somebody from any part of the world to send you money. And for me, it was actually, I mean, I said, wow, I mean, huge wow. And I, I got in love with the concept. I mean, uh, uh, that's how I got interested in Bitcoin. So, I mean, I, I missed the very first halving. Of course, the second halving, I mean, uh, I was in 2016. I mean, uh, I already had the coin already was up and running. So I saw it very, very, very well. And now this third one was, was actually very good because in Konyo, uh, we're increasing number of volume. More, more and more people are, are getting into the cryptocurrency space and are using Konyo. And uh, I mean, uh, it was actually very important. Some numbers? No. Hmm? Can you share some numbers? How many people? Uh, well, I mean, uh, I cannot say publicly, but okay. I mean, uh, we have a very good number of people. I mean, we increased the traffic like four times. Mm -hmm. And we're also hiring, so I mean, uh, for for, in, in, for technical positions. So now I'm using like, uh, sorry, this webinar also to make a promotion uh, message. So if you're uh, a software engineer, uh, backend, mobile, uh, or an expert in cryptocurrencies, 
apply to Konyo, send me a message, and they're very, very happy to have a talk with you. Uh, definitely, this is something I'm going to, uh, to post afterwards. I have a very big uh, uh, list with connections in LinkedIn with people who um, are mainly from Bulgaria mm -hmm. um, or uh, from East Europe, but not only. So I'm going to, uh, to post this good news. It's, uh, it's great. So you're expanding your team. You're looking for additional people to uh, technical to uh, develop, uh, to work on the development of uh, your products and extend. And also it's a suggestion for uh, engineers in general. Uh, mm. This is a very sexy talk. First, it's very sexy, like uh, sexy in the engineering world. I mean, in the engineering, engineering world. world. Oh, could you please describe what does it mean exactly? So just yeah, no. uh, briefest uh, around the atmosphere in, in the office. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, no the office. Me, everybody is. I mean, no. Right now, right now in the office there is nobody because in the quarantine, uh, like uh, the atmosphere, is, everybody works from home. Okay. But what I'm saying is that if you're a software engineer today, like uh, you're uh, and you're working, uh, you're looking for an area to specialize or something that you want to learn. I would say learn about cryptocurrencies because it's first and foremost it's very challenging. It's actually very. I mean, engineers, uh, they want to have a challenge. They want to be like a push yeah. their knowledge. And the cryptocurrency actually allows you to do that. Second, uh, it's getting more and more important. Like think about this, I mean, Bitcoin has been the very first cryptocurrency and it actually opened up a world that did not exist before. Now, and after 11 years, because Bitcoin started like uh, January what, 3rd, uh, uh, 2009, after, over, after 11 years, more and more cryptocurrencies have started. Um, some, of course, most of them are different from Bitcoin with pros and cons. And, uh, but you can see like even recently, uh, a number of um, initiatives have started that take inspiration from Bitcoin. Of course, I mean, they are, not, they are different, but I mean, they have uh, interesting pieces and they can uh, increase the knowledge of cryptocurrency across the world. I mean, the first example that comes to my mind is, uh, and I know it's like uh, there are pros and cons, don't get me wrong, but the first that comes to my mind is uh, Libra, which uh, started uh, I mean, as an initiative from Facebook uh, to, like, to almost have like a global currency across the world uh, that can be stable in value. Uh, people uh, have um, strong uh, feelings, uh, pros and cons against, against or pro Libra, or other stable coins, like uh, coins uh, issued by governments. But the thing is this, that uh, with these cryptocurrencies uh, that are stable, uh, maybe they are not very decentralized, but at least uh, they are, it's a good way for uh, normal people to understand what a cryptocurrency is. And then eventually, once they use it, once they understand that it's something normal, that's something easy, they can go into Bitcoin or other real cryptocurrencies. So for me, like, uh, and there has been there is a huge like development in the world from engineering point of view, economical point of view, political point of view. I mean, I I couldn't imagine an area more like hotter than this, and that's why I invite software engineers who want to learn more I mean, to do it. It's actually I mean you make a real impact in the world in this space. Right. So uh, definitely uh, I'm going to announce this that you're looking for people who would like to solve uh, puzzles, uh, hot uh, puzzles <laughs> uh, in this uh, environment. Okay, and you mentioned about um, uh, the other cryptocurrency. So uh, basically I tend uh, and I insist, I would say, uh, talking uh, about Bitcoin only, but I'm really curious uh, to know all this, uh, it's not, Offensive, but there is a very big attention on several mm -hmm. on stable coins, I would say, uh, in general. And this with uh, Tether, what's um, I mean, there is a very big uh, uh, liquidity in general. Um, and I'm just uh, thinking, and all these uh, Libra, for example, that what you are mentioning, Libra, it's a project, yeah, it's kind of a bridge between. Uh, a normal bank users mm -hmm. and uh, let's say Bitcoin because to use independently independently Bitcoin right now it's a, a little bit uh, 
tricky uh, because you you need uh, to to have yeah, hardware yeah. and something like uh, 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 there are these new uh, currencies uh, digital currencies such as libra or the central bank digital currencies uh, like the one that uh, the central bank of europe is thinking about or china seems like is uh, issuing they are a bridge uh, between like uh, the current world and uh, the cryptocurrency world like it's a good way in my opinion uh, for making like uh, normal people use cryptocurrencies every day so let, let me put it this way bitcoin is wonderful it's great i mean it's been like a major revolution but bitcoin is not perfect like uh, uh, first and foremost for me like uh, the major flaw of bitcoin is that it's not anonymous i mean i need to be honest i mean the cryptocurrency that i actually like the most is not bitcoin it's actually it's, it's monero something that i really love but again bitcoin has been the first and there's been lots i mean again lots of lots of pros but it's not anonymous and that's a major weakness but the other major weakness of bitcoin is actually that it and again actually most uh, on, on every cryptocurrency is that is not uh, scalable at least not today i mean i really hope in the future there's going to be a major technological breakthrough but today is not scalable so it cannot really be used as uh, in every day like because if everybody started to use bitcoin for uh, classic uh, paying for a coffee or uh, buying like shoes, whatever, every day. Well, at that point, uh, the network is going to be congested. And uh, it happened like, uh, like December 2017, I remember, it was actually madness. So you couldn't make any real transaction. It was impossible because of uh, the way that the Bitcoin blockchain uh, works. So uh, it's not for everyday use. It actually, and it became instead a wonderful investment. It's a wonderful, uh, let's say, store of value. Then you buy Bitcoin, uh, you keep it, uh, you hold it, and then you sell it later on if you want for, for a gain, hopefully. But for everyday use, uh, it doesn't work. So in that space, uh, because you need normal people, they want, if they use something every day, like if they use the iPhone every day, if they use Skype or Zoom every day, they understand it's actually easy, and then they want to get more. And that's why if there is a currency like uh, Libra or a digital euro, whatever, that people can use every day, and at that point, uh, they get used to this new like, uh, way of dealing with money, and then eventually they, want, they would like to buy Bitcoin. It's almost like, like the, the metaphor that I give is, uh, we, here, uh, digital currencies uh, like uh, Libra or a stable coin would be like uh, the normal euro, like uh, the nickel uh, coin that you have in your pocket while bitcoin would be like the gold uh, sovereign like the gold sterling pound i don't know if you if you know what i'm talking about yeah. gold coins, it's going to be more, more similar to bitcoin so that's the role of bitcoin something that uh, it's actually valuable and you buy it and you keep it while the other currencies are more like for a day everyday use this is going to be the scenario in my opinion for the next few years unless bitcoin has a major technological breakthrough I mean, uh, we, keep, we keep hearing about light, uh, Lightning Network or other technologies, and uh, hopefully things are, change, are going to change. But as of today, this is what I'm seeing. Yeah. Yeah, uh, definitely. So uh, I don't know uh, what to say in that direction. I hope uh, really with this uh, liquid Lightning, RGB, all these additional development and implementations that are there, uh, making just to fix some of the issues step by step and yeah uh, definitely i do agree with you that bitcoin is store of value and right now it's too volatile it's not also the fact that you cannot uh, it can it's not fast and tr the transactions you cannot use it on yeah if you if you talk about like the store of value though the thing is this i mean uh, i know there are people who are crazy positively speaking but my suggestion, uh, if you talk about investment, uh, is to invest 1% to maximum 5% of your uh, savings into Bitcoin. Because it's a good, I mean, it's a very risky investment. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm very positive about the future of Bitcoin. But, you know, there are a number of things that could happen. Maybe there's going to be a Bitcoin 2.0. It's going to maybe very more sophisticated, more uh, technologically evoluted better than bitcoin and bitcoin per se is going to go to zero as value because something better has come i mean it happens all the time in technology i mean like uh, we don't use the same technology as 20 years ago so i mean a uh, number of uh, tech, i mean things evolve 
So that's one reason. The second, I mean, you never know that you can, the coin might have bugs that we don't know today. And uh, through those bugs, I mean, actually bad, bad things could happen. I mean, we were close to that, like uh, when was it, like uh, almost two years ago uh, with the bug uh, that was caught by the Bitcoin Cash development team and the Bitcoin fixed it like uh, very rapidly. So I'm just saying that it's a risk investment uh, thing. So, I mean, I'll, I'm very positive that things can go very well, very well, but I mean, I wouldn't put all my money in, in Bitcoin. I would say from 1% to 5% of my personal savings, I would put it in Bitcoin. It's actually a very wise investment to do. Have you lost Bitcoins? No, I don't lose Bitcoin because that's one of the reason uh, I started Conyo, built Conyo. Because Conyo, I mean, uh, and that's a wonderful question. Like, I don't want to go too technical, but I mean, cryptocurrencies are, um, I mean, probably people uh, know about this topic, but I'm going to say it again. The way that you access a cryptocurrency is through a private key. A private key, I mean, uh, to describe it to a general public is very, it's a little bit hard, but now I'm saying something like uh, incorrect, so please don't quote me on this. But you can see the private key has a super huge password. Mm -hmm. that uh, only you know. Again, it's incorrect. So I just want to stress it again, but just make, make people a uh, little bit understand what a private key yeah. is. With that super mega password, you will be able to uh, transfer your Bitcoin. You will be able to access and do whatever you want with your Bitcoin. However, if you lose that password, you're screwed. I mean, like you lose access to your funds. And it's actually very important to, to know this, that... Uh, you're in control, but at the same time, because you're in control, you can lose control. I mean, and that, I mean, talking about this, I'm, I'm saying something, um, I mean, I always uh, quote the great philosopher, uh, Ben Parker. You know, ben, you know who Ben Parker is? Tell me. No, tell me. He's the uncle of Spider-Man. <laughs> and he said, from a great power comes great responsibility. So I know it's like from the comics, but it's actually a very, very important uh, sentence. Like, uh, from great power, from the, the fact that you are your own bank, the fact that you can control your funds, comes a great responsibility that you need to be responsible. If you lose that key, if you lose that password, there is nobody else that you can go to. Like you lost it. And uh, you know, like in my life, I met a number of people that lost, even like uh, I met a guy who lost 30 million euros worth of Bitcoin because he lost the private key. And you know, like uh, these people, they, they have, um, they walk with the debt in their eyes because they know they can be like um, millionaires and instead because of a little piece of information they lost it, they cannot like uh, live the life that they want. So that's why I mean, many people lose private keys and it's very important to know this. I mean that uh, you can be in control, wonderful, but be careful. So there is one of the reasons why I started Cogno is because I knew this and they thought, look, is there a way to like help people, uh, normal people to enter the space, to buy cryptocurrency, to use cryptocurrencies, but at the same time, in case of emergency, can we help them uh, to recover them? And, this, and, uh, we, and I was able to say, and I'm able to say, yes, the way Konyo works, uh, and I'm trying to make it simple because it's a little bit technical, it's through not one key, but through three keys, three instead of one. One is the key that the customer has. So the customer has one key on uh, the smartphone, on the application. Mm -hmm. One key, uh, Konyo has. So second key uh, is in Konyo. And then there is a third key offline, not connected to the internet, in a third party organization. Mm -hmm. You need two keys out of three to transfer your Bitcoin. So in a normal situation, the key that you have on your application through the app, plus the key that's in Konyo, two keys of three, you transfer your Bitcoin. That's the normal scenario. Yes, uh, just a question. So did, uh, did one key which is shared with the three parties or these are three no, different? No, these three, each key is in only one party. So each key, key and one, key one is the customer, key two is in Konyo, and key three on a third party. And they cannot independently uh, withdraw or the uh, right. so The system is a multi-signature system where you need two keys mm -hmm. out of 
free to withdraw. So in a normal situation, usually the customer uses the key on the smartphone and then Konyo uses a second key. At, at that point, you, the customer is able to move the funds. Now, what happens if is the customer has lost the smartphone, the customer has lost the key, or the customer, sorry if I'm like a gloom, but the customer dies. Yeah. At that point, the customer or the pair goes to, let's say, Konyo. Konyo tells, okay, download the app again, send us the documents, we verify that you are who you say you are, and you are entitled to recover the funds. And if all goes well, Konyo goes to the third party, and with two keys of three, we move the funds to the new wallet of the customer. So we are able to have the customer recover the funds in case of emergency on the customer side. Also, this is good in also another scenario. Let's say that Konyo disappears. I mean, hopefully it doesn't happen. I really hope it doesn't happen, but let's say worst case scenario, I mean, Konyo long is no longer the here. Well, the customer at the point can go to the third party, which is a bank, and uh, usually the bank is still uh, there and the customer with uh, the customer key and the bank key can move the funds to another wallet if the customer wants so we are with this solution we are resilient to the failure of one party to the one party hopefully it's not it's not it's not going hopefully it's only the customer but <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so and, uh, what about so this is again private key distribution centralization yeah. dependencies there is you are not your own bank i mean uh, this like all i would say the not all but the majority of uh, of the product uh, similar uh, to, to this they have such dependencies because actually you are are not capable to manage something on behalf of other uh, people. So, yeah, you know, there is kind of just um, at some no, point no. you lose sense uh, the, the stuff in general. There are pros and cons in every approach. I mean, uh, I'm, what I'm telling everybody, look, if you're able to handle Bitcoin by yourself, please do it. I mean, I, I invite you to do it. It's actually it's a great uh, way to learn. But be careful that if you handle Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies by yourself, and you do some mistake uh, or something bad happens today or 10 years from now, you're on your own. I mean, nobody can help you out. So the question is, can you do it yourself? If yes, yes. If not, I mean, uh, uh, you better rely on other companies. And, uh, and Konyo, we provide this uh, solution. Other companies provide different solutions, but yeah. Yeah, I invite you to try. No, fair enough, definitely. If um, uh, there are for sure uh, people uh, who are willing to accommodate uh, Bitcoins and they're not sure how to do it, they have to trust someone. Either you go and you do it uh, a person you know, so you've already built uh, the trust with this product, you have uh, your customers, clients. Um, and so, and you, I, I wish you uh, good luck and additional. Uh, developments, futures, and projects, and don't think in the direction of uh, Konyo disappearing, okay? No, no, I wait. Don't <laughs> of course not. You could be like, I want to be for years at least. But at the same time, you need, as an engineer, I need to think about the worst case scenario. Exactly. I know this life sucks because you won't hope for the best, but you need to account for the worst. And uh, I mean, you need to cover every single aspect of life. Definitely, we cannot, uh, yeah, future is unpredictable. <laughs> yes. We have to be careful and take all necessary steps in advance. Okay, so uh, tell me what are your personal uh, plans and from business perspective and your personal uh, with your other projects in, in, the, uh, in that industry in the next three to 10 years? So how do you see Konyo? What, what kind of projects would you like to develop more? How do you envision your future? Uh, uh, <laughs> my future, I mean, uh, no, I think it's a wonderful question. My life goal, my, my dream, I know it's like very, very challenging and uh, it's quite impossible, but you know what, I'm, that's my goal. My, my, that's my, my dream, let me put it this way, is to become president of Italy. 
So that's my <laughs> when I'm 80, 80, like uh, 40 years from today. Vincenzo, so once you're the president of Italy, because I'm going also to vote for you, but I'm not sure I'm eligible to vote a vote for the president of Italy. No, but yeah. <laughs> I will be happily and proud sharing with people that I know the president. So I wish you definitely. <laughs> it's going to be like in many years from today, let's see. But you know, you need, that's my goal. I always try make something that I like. I like my, I love my country and I want to give something back to my country. And uh, you know what, I mean, like, uh, that's why I built this company in Italy, for a number of reasons. Uh, because I lived in the United States for like uh, 11 years. Uh, and, uh, you know, I built the companies in the United States, I learned, I studied, uh, I studied Stanford, worked in Microsoft, worked in Yahoo, uh, built a startup, sold the technology to Amazon. That was in the United States. But I never did anything in Italy. I just had a wonderful education at um, like um, high school in Italy, but I nev never gave anything back. So that's why one of the reasons why I decided to come back. And uh, I said, look, I really want to build a company here to bring know-how in Italy, because Italy, unfortunately, is not good in computer science. It's, there are a few exceptions, but it's nothing compared to uh, Silicon Valley, if not London or Berlin. It's not, there is very little in Italy. So I wanted to bring back know-how and I want to create a company that provides jobs, like very good jobs to people. Because once you uh, show people that what you can do stuff, then people say, look, I mean, we can do it. And they build even their own companies. I mean, think about even, um, Italy is good in cars, like probably, you know, Ferrari. Yeah. You know, you know, you know, Ferrari actually was very important because after Ferrari, Lamborghini started, you know, Lamborghini. Like yeah. it's Famous in the cryptocurrency, Lambo. But the thing is, is Lamborghini started because he wanted he wanted to show Ferrari, Mr. Lamborghini wanted to show Mr. Ferrari that he could do cars better than him. Mm -hmm. So like competition, like maybe ego. But I mean, uh, he started in another company, and that's how Italy became very good also in the car industry. And uh, you know, I wanted to try to like um, give uh, something back to Italy and try to create a seed where uh, other companies can start from. I really hope that Konya is going to become a billion dollar company, hopefully. But my real goal is actually to see like an ecosystem growing. Because 10 years, 20 years from now, I want to, I want to say, look, I mean, uh, your company started because uh, you learned something from Konya or because Konya helped you out to grow it. Uh, that's for me, that's something that uh, it's uh, something that actually I cherish. Great. You have very great very big dreams and i uh, wish you they to to come to reality yeah, and, uh, yes. as yes. soon as possible so being president at 80 years so, so excuse me but at least at 60 something like that because you you need some time to make some ref, uh, reformations of the country and also to implement end-to-end -end bitcoin of so, but I'll talk about dreams, uh, Valeria. I mean, it's actually more generic, but I mean, people usually they, I mean, not just in Italy, but mostly in um, uh, Europe, many countries, uh, they don't dream or maybe they dream very low, like uh, they don't have a um, great uh, aspiration. And even if they do, their aspiration is up here. And I can tell you, it's if you aim here or if you aim here, the, the hardship, I mean, the way the how to get there is almost the same. Like the difficulty is almost the same. So you might as well shoot for the stars instead of shooting for like uh, something nearby. So that's my main bit. Um, there is another thing, uh, Vincenzo, which is um, you're completely right with this, but the environment, uh, because you say if everybody has equal chance to, to succeed, Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, in, I would say, in the majority of the case scenarios, the environment is the uh, key role player and uh, defines more or less uh, your future way of mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, living. So, um, um, so I would say that uh, uh, we are all here lucky people who are on uh, this webinar today because we know what is Bitcoin. And uh, we have a professional like you, who is explaining us uh, more details. So that's, uh, that's great. Thank you once again. And um, I want to, you just uh, maybe 
we, 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 you shared uh, with us uh, the majority of uh, the project and also the things that you're doing and where you've been inspired from. Um, but, but what about why exactly uh, Bitcoin? So you shared how you got introduced by your friend when you uh, were exchanging uh, uh, olive oil for Bitcoin. But uh, this uh, belief in Bitcoin, the real understanding uh, and the, ne the necessity actually of replacing uh, a not working financial system with something completely different and new, how this uh, came up um, actually and uh, wh what would you advise us? Why we have to buy Bitcoin now? I mean, uh, for a number of reasons. I mean, if you talk about like uh, from a financial investment, uh, like I said, it's very wise to invest a small money, small amounts. Uh, but it's, thinking about this, like um, for a simple reason that if you think about euro or dollar or most uh, even like the Chinese RMB, all these currencies are depreciating. So, I mean, I know it sounds like a little bit philosophical, but economy is mostly philosoph philosophical. It's not a science. And uh, it makes you wonder what money is, uh, in the sense that the euro, it's being printed. Uh, a lot of euros are being printed every month. Same with the dollar. I mean, like, uh, when you hear about quantitative easing, uh, when you hear about the bazooka, whatever, these are great words. But you know what it means? That the money is being printed. Uh, and at the point, you mean, like, with, without any limit. Uh, and you worry, and you think about, like, something, okay, so if money is being printed, like, the, like there is no tomorrow, but nobody, no, the real people, like the ordinary people, don't really get any benefits from this money printing because the money stays in the bank. They just like uh, save like uh, the balance sheets of the bank. You, you think about like, uh, man, I mean, is this like, uh, it's a big like yeah. fraud. I don't want to say, I mean, fraud is a big word, but I mean, uh, you keep thinking about like, uh, there's something like very fishy in this, in this world. Like, uh, because at the end of the day, I know it sounds like weird to say, but uh, if you, because I'm also numismatic, I mean, I like history and I also like the history of money. If you look at money, at the end of the day, you only see a piece of papers. If you look, for example, uh, the, the German mark of the uh, 1920s, uh, the, of the Weimar Republic with trillion dollars of marks, those are pieces of papers. But even like uh, the, the money we see today, what is its value? It's what people give to that piece of paper. It's a collective illusion that really believe is, is worth something. Now, if the central banks in the world they keep printing, 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 you think about, well, I mean, is that value actually worth something? Especially if you compare it to something like Bitcoin, which is not printed or like uh, it's actually uh, printed much, much less, especially after every halving. And you compare Bitcoin with other national currencies, you see Bitcoin something scarce in value that actually uh, is being demanded more and more by people. While you see the euro or the dollar that's been like printed like, like there is no tomorrow, like uh, every day, and there is no real benefit for people. And then the point said, you know what, I mean, let's buy Bitcoin. At least it's more democratic, it's more fair than the current monetary system that we have, that we live today. So that's why, I mean, I invite people to buy Bitcoin in small quantities from 1.5% of your financial investments because again, it's always like a little bit risky, but it actually, it's important both for, from your um, financial uh, wealth than for saying a bit like a go to hell, let me put it this way, to the current monetary system of the, the Central Bank of Europe or the Federal Reserve. Yeah, thank you uh, for this uh, extensive uh, yeah, explanation. It is uh, definitely this non-stop Printing, printing money. So I mean, what it, you know, what is standing behind it? So what if people started asking these questions? By the way, people who have never been curious about economic, like me, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm reading uh, last yeah, uh, three years more about it. But uh, well, the most uh, I have Bitcoin has created is actually not Bitcoin per se. It yeah. actually has raised the question to people. It makes people ask themselves, what is money? It's actually, it's not philosophical. People are saying, no, okay, yeah, what is money? And it's actually, it's an important question to ask uh, uh, oneself. And uh, once you ask it, uh, you see, wow, I mean, uh, things are not as imagined. 
because people initially might think that money has value by itself. It's not. I mean, like, especially after you print money like there is no tomorrow. I mean, at that point, it's totally worthless. It's a piece of paper, and that's it. Right. And uh, we, we see all the people who have accommodated so much paper recently. Another type of paper, what they're doing with it right now, but let's not go <laughs> into that direction. So, uh, Vincenzo, uh, I would really like to thank you for uh, this uh, conversation. I've uh, learned lots of new things. Mm -hmm. I uh, hope also uh, the other guys uh, who, who joined us. By the way, uh, let me uh, just uh, remind everyone that if there are some questions, you uh, can uh, type them in the common chat uh, group where uh, we have here in Zoom. You will be able to see it. It must be somewhere that uh, depends on the device you're using. So uh, we have uh, four more minutes. If you guys have any questions to Vincenzo about Bitcoin or about his uh, role and project, please type them. And uh, I left them speechless. Yeah, so you, you have, uh, I, I would say, uh, every day lots of calls with people, clients, project leaders. So you're, you're used to talking a lot. <laughs> so, Hi guys. Uh, it's such a, such a wonderful topic. Uh, then I mean, it's good to talk about. Like, uh, it's very exciting. I, I have here um, a Carmela. Uh, she has a question. Hi, Car Carmela. Hi guys. Hi. Uh, very nice to meet you, Vincenzo. I know Valeria <laughs> already. Um, I was listening. Um, um, you were saying that Bitcoin was not uh, anonymous, uh, anonymous enough. Is that correct? Yeah. Right. And why, why do you think so? And also, is it Bitcoin or is it blockchain? Well, I mean, it's not that I think so. It's the way it is. Uh, let's say if you go on the Bitcoin, let's talk about Bitcoin, for example. If you go to the Bitcoin blockchain, you would see from the very beginning, every single transaction that uh, has been uh, made from one address to others, like from the very beginning of history of Bitcoin. You see, the, block, the Bitcoin blockchain is very transparent. You see uh, money flowing from one party to another, to another, to another, till the end of the Bitcoin blockchain, to the very end, from till forever. Now, uh, per se, this would be anonymous, so let me put it this way. But if you're able somehow to link that uh, Bitcoin address, let me put it this way, I'm, like, I'm talking about, don't quote me on this, but to give you like some sort of like more uh, concrete example. If you're able to tie a Bitcoin address to a person, at that point, you know what the person has done with his money. For example, let's say that I go, let's say that Valeria has um, um, a coffee shop and Valeria accepts Bitcoin. I go to Valeria and I say, Valeria, can I pay with Bitcoin? And she, and she says, yes, Vincenzo, you can pay with Bitcoin. I pay with my wallet. At that point, Valeria knows that that transaction, that address comes from me. She's able to like, like bind my name somehow because she knows me with my wallet. And at that point, she will be able to trace back all the transactions that I have made or the future transactions. Again, there are ways to mitigate this problem, but there is no real solution. And in fact, every single person, big, um, let's say, I don't want to say criminal because it's, a, it's a, probably not a proper word, but uh, uh, people that were investigated by the FBI, for example, like in the case of Silk Road, mm -hmm. they've been caught. Like, uh, I mean, uh, all, have, because Bitcoin allows you, like uh, being transparent, if you're able to somehow, find uh, a way to connect a physical identity to a Bitcoin address, well, at that point, you expose all of the transactions of, of that person. Now, there are other instead cryptocurrencies, such as Monero, which I love. I mean, man, I'm probably, I'm, I really love that cryptocurrency. Is uh, I'm a strong, uh, uh, like, uh, very bullish on Monero, because that uh, cryptocurrency is fully anonymous. It works differently from Bitcoin, 
because it somehow from the protocol it mixes uh, all your transactions with others uh, so that even somebody that looks uh, on the blockchain of Monero from the outside uh, would not be able to tell that um, it was Vincenzo to send that transaction to Valeria, let me put it this way. So that's an anonymous blockchain. Bitcoin is not anonymous. It can somehow, you can try to mix it, to mix your transactions, but because it's not part of the protocol, it leaves you exposed if you do very thorough forensic, forensic analysis, analytics. Yeah, the only way Bitcoin is anonymous for me, because if you have, for example, if you accommodate right now value and you are not associating yourself to any none of the addresses, you are practically it's only you who know that this work, this transaction exists for you. Well, Valeria, yes, yes or no, because if you if you if you're a miner, you get Bitcoin no. for mining. You're totally correct. If you get Bitcoin from exchanges, I need to give. Yes, uh, if you get from exchanges. Well, the point is changed and know uh, who you are. So, I mean, uh, in my opinion, that's a major weakness of Bitcoin. I mean, again, Bitcoin was not born to be anonymous. Uh, and uh, it was born to do something else. But, and that's why, the reason why I'm saying there are other cryptocurrencies such as Monero, which do that job very, very well. Yes, but for example, right now, uh, this additional development and uh, the side chain with Liquid, it's uh, uh, kind of uh, anonymous. Well, I, I because it's inside the side chain, it's anonymous, isn't it? I can I cannot speak. I haven't to look into that. Uh, to, uh, okay, I think this is the case, but it, I have to verify this with a technical person. Okay, great. Thanks, uh, Kami, very much for this uh, question. Thank you, guys. Uh, greetings to Geneva, to Switzerland. <laughs> Okay, Vincenzo, thank you um, once again for your participation. I really appreciate your time uh, this evening with, um, with us. I'm going to uh, publish uh, the video in um, YouTube, in our, uh, in our channel, and uh, later on in Facebook. So uh, we keep in touch. I wish everyone to fulfill your your dreams and whatever you wish for to happen as soon as possible. Bitcoin. Positive energies and more bitcoins. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.